It's 19th century works for violin and orchestra based on usually 18th century Scottish tunes. The one sort of repertoire piece in the, on the disc is the Brook Scottish Fantasy. It, it makes such perfect sense to pair the Brook Scottish Fantasy with great Scottish Scottish fantasies. There are two pieces here that have never been recorded before and one that I think has been recorded once. And so the idea was to collect together all these pieces that are based on Scottish tunes and then just to put icing on the cake, Rachel's written her own medley, which she's doing with the Scottish uh, fiddler uh, Alistair Fraser. <laughs> So we're trying to find all the original tunes that the guys in the 19th century used to make their pieces. There are not a lot of people of her talent, of her quicksilver virtuosity, who would also be so intellectually curious as to delve into this kind of repertoire. She's trying to get the flavor, and she goes to the right sources. She goes to the people that know what Scottish music is all about. I mean, there are very few musicians who will go to this trouble. And one of the reasons you're here is because I was instantly interested in somebody who was prepared to go to that trouble. And you are in the only place in the world where this information can be retrieved at this speed. You know what, I have one more question about through the world. Next, please. Well, right now I'm finding some of those 18th century sources of the original tunes that were then used by the 19th century composers in their orchestral pieces for the violin solo. So it's like a treasure hunt. So when you find a tune, it's like, oh, that's the tune. They're all findable. It's just a question of digging enough. So he's not just playing it as a 19th century romantic piece of music, but somehow including a sense and knowledge of the Scottish music that's within it. So it should be a completely original recording. And then she's busy working with a Scottish fiddler to, you know, to understand some of the idioms on the ornamentation and... So I would, oh man, I'd I would, love I to learn how to do that. I would make articulate by effectively turning my fiddle into a bagpipe and using grace notes. You know, because as a classical musician, I'm doing so many different things. I just really felt like, you know, where it's coming from is this fiddle music world and, you know, let's bring in somebody that yeah. does this exclusively. What we're really looking at is, is dialects, different dialects, ways of speaking on the fiddle. If I take an, an air from the Highlands of Scotland, like this one's called Aelin Bake Donahoyne, which is Gaelic for Little Brown Island in the Sea, I could play... Which is, every phrase is, is measured, and uh, I'm using kind of a nice medium and vibrato. There's no ornamentation in there at all. But if I if I was to listen to a Gaelic singer from the Isle, Isle of Skye or from Lewis, they don't sing like that. So why would I play it on the, on the violin like that? What they sing is more like which takes you into a whole different space, I would call it a Gallic space. And I'm thinking in, in Gallic sound. These different worlds that exist around these different styles, like um, sort of like parallel universes. I travel around the country, around the world, doing concerts in concert halls. And, you know, in the same town, you know, a few streets over, there's like fiddle contests happening and there's folk music, um, in pubs or, or different venues where you know you're hearing old time music or Celtic music and there's all this this stuff going on. Alistair Brazier was of course playing on the project, actually came to Chicago to work with Rachel before and 
they went to a, a Celtic pub in Chicago and jammed together and and you know going there with the, the people who are real uh, aficionados of that kind of music watching them you know clapping and hooting and hollering uh, during the uh, the various reels and things it was, it was a real pleasure you know I think maybe classical music has been considered too highbrow for so long and it's nice to show that you know one can sit and enjoy uh, classical music and there are similarities here she plays the Brooks Scottish Fantasy and in, in, in the setting of a pub you hear it with an orchestra and concert hall it's different but you all of a sudden you hear it and you see these are the same tunes you know she's really breathing new life into these works by embellishing them as they would be played by an authentic Scottish fiddler so she's really kind of literally bridging the gap between these two worlds. Fantastic. I just loved it. Every minute it was excellent. I really couldn't believe that the classical and the, the, you know, the Scottish fiddle music, especially like Shetland music and stuff, could blend that much with the classical. There is a lot of crossover in music. People are really interested, take somebody like Yo-Yo Ma, he's very interested in different aspects of music. And it's bringing musicians together. Music is music. Jazz is music, rock is music, and I think it's a wonderful thing, actually, that, that she is interested in delving into the different types of playing. In, in a way, it's a kind of humility, it, you know, Rachel obviously must believe in herself and, and do what she does, but at the same time, that's care with, with the music she's playing and the kind of work on detail is amazing, and it really shows. The world is full of violinists who can play as fast and as fiery as Rachel does, but there are very, very, very few people who can have her technique but also have her incredible musicality. You know, it's just touching that she's, she's made such a, an effort to really understand, and then you see that in her work with all this Scottish stuff. You know, she really wants to go deep, and it's not just it's not just an effect. It's not that they say, well, it'd be a good idea to do Scottish. But it seems to be coming from somewhere right deep down, you know, a real passion for this kind of music. You can teach knowledge and information. And we taught her a lot of information, and she sopped it up beautifully and quickly and internalized it. But the one thing that is almost impossible to teach is instinct. Do you have the instinct to make the appropriate kind of music, the appropriate kind of expression, and to develop a comfortable style within the framework of the kind of music you're doing? And uh, she has that instinct. And in the middle of a very intense recording session where she's having to do all sorts of double octave glissandi and all kinds of technical difficulty, she suddenly turns around and says, this is so beautiful. And I just thought, how glorious that is, that she's not there just making sure she's got every note right, not confident that she is in control of it all and this is her performance but actually thinking about the music and the composer which is what it's all really about at the heel of the hunt that's what the true musicians care for that's what they truly love and she has that in her